Welcome to episode 92 of Sharing Life Lessons. This is season 10. We are one spirit, one soul, one world, and together we are creating a library of stories and life lessons. I am your host, Hamida, and I want to bring you stories because stories matter, stories inspire, stories teach, and stories heal. Listeners, this is part two of my discussion with Salima Baluchi, a Reiki master and an acupuncturist with a long-lasting career in delivering energy therapies. For those who are about to listen to this episode but have not listened to episode 91, I recommend that you stop here and listen to episode 91 because this is a true sequel of that episode. If you don't do that, you may not get the entire context of this episode and therefore you may not be able to extract from it the life lessons that need to be extracted. For those who have listened to episode 91 and are joining us here for the second part of it, you are in for a treat. Before I start, I wish to humbly share with you an experience, or should I say a life experience that I had. This will also be a tribute to my late aunt whose burial ceremony took place today. Last Tuesday, I visited Dallas to meet my aunt. My cousin had indicated to us that she was critical, and I did not want to miss seeing her and letting her know that I loved her and appreciated everything she had done for me. When I got there, she saw me and gave me the best smile ever. That smile will remain with me for a while. Although she was very weak and could hardly speak, we had a few short conversations. On Thursday, the hospice nurse told us that her organs were beginning to fail and she was ready to make the transition. At 4.02 p.m. that day, with her loving four children by her side and all her loved ones, including her younger brother and me around her, she opened her eyes one more time, scanned around to see everyone in the room around her, closed her eyes, and stopped breathing. One second she was with us, and the next second she was not. The reason I call this a life experience is because this was the first time I witnessed someone transition into the eternal realm, and I am forever grateful that it was her that I witnessed, because she was a kind and beautiful soul. I think seeing her loved ones around her enabled her to leave this world with beautiful grace. She left in peace, and she left us all in peace. A couple of hours after she passed on, blessings came down from the heavens in the form of rain and soft wind, and the full moon shone with a halo around it. Each of this, a reflection of her soul. I am sharing this with you because I wish for you to take away from my experience a life lesson of your choice. But also know that death is peaceful. Death is also beautiful. We will be leaving a transitory world and passing on to an eternal world. This experience has fully changed my perspective of life and death. I wish and pray that like her, my death is also among my loved ones holding my hand and helping me transition with their last loving words and kisses. We love you and we will miss you, Malik Mami. Rest in eternal peace. Amin. Now over to the second part of this amazing episode. In part one in episode 91, Salima told us why it is important to raise our vibration. Today, in part two, she will provide us with tips and tools for how to raise our vibration. Of course, as committed to you, we will begin with the story of how Salima discovered that both her daughters had the same generational gift of communicating with spirit. Here we go. I have daughters who are uh, a year and a half apart. And when they were four and five years old, one of them could hear spirit uh, energy. So they could hear the voices and hear spirit. And one of them could see. The one that could see couldn't hear and the one that could hear couldn't see. So it was unbelievable. I even, there's even a story behind that of how I realized one could hear and one could see. That's when I realized that, oh my God, they do have this ability. Wait, please tell us the story. 
So the story behind that is it was a Mother's Day weekend and I was studying as I'm constantly trying to upgrade my skills. So I took them to McDonald's Playland to let them play and it'll give me a chance to work. My one daughter, the eldest one, came down from the slide in the Playland and she was bewildered. And when I said, what's wrong? She said, she looked around and she says, I don't understand. She says, you're the only parent here and we're the only kids here. It was quite early in the morning. And she says, but that little girl is up there and she, she doesn't have anybody here watching over her. And I said, what little girl? And she says, well, mama, I can't see her, but I can hear her. And she said to me, I'm so afraid to come down the slide. And I said, don't be afraid. And then she came down right behind me and I could feel her behind me. But when I turned around, she was gone. Mm. And then I, at that point, thought, okay, I realized that there's a spirit in this play area but that I needed to pack up and go home. And I was like, please don't follow us home. Please don't follow us Mm -hmm. home. I was at that point thinking, I don't need this right now. And later on that afternoon, after the girls got up from their nap, my youngest one came downstairs and she says, Mama, who's that little girl sitting in the living room? And Mm -hmm. I realized that one had the ability to see and one had the ability to hear. Similarly, one of the daughters, the one that could hear, was aware that her teacher's mother in grade two or three had passed away even before the teacher was aware. And when she came home, she says, oh, my teacher's mom passed away. And I said, oh, that's horrible. Your teacher must be so upset. And she said, oh, no, she doesn't know yet. Uh, And I was just shocked. And I said, I hope you didn't say anything. And she said, no, mom, I didn't. And on the Monday, I get a call from the principal saying that she was upset that a spirit was following her around. So there was a million things running through my head, like, oh my Mm -hmm. God, what are they going to think of this? And uh, lo and behold, the principal actually confirmed. She says, you know what? Her teacher's mother passed away on Friday. So her teacher's not here. And at that point, I was really relieved because the principal said, look, I do believe in spirit. So it wasn't something out of the ordinary for her. But I did realize at that point that the girls had the gifts. In knowing that your vibe attracts your tribe, if you're of a lower vibration, you're going to attract that. Mm -hmm. If you have higher standards, if you want to demand nothing but the best for yourself, if you want to lift your life, if you want a better career, if you want stronger relationships, if you want to earn more money, you need to keep raising that vibration. There's so much around having that vibration, you know, just being at such a high level and bringing in greater experiences that you'll never want to be lower. You'll feel that and it'll be like a natural high. So your vibe attracts your tribe. So this can be a whole different episode because... 100%. It's about... 100%. Right? It's about if you raise your vibrations at a level and realize that now you are feeling irritable or emotionally not stable with others around you and they could be close family members, etc. You realize they're at a different level now. How do you deal with that? So... I think I'm, if you're okay with it, I'm going to bring you back for that. That that sounds great, simply because this has become such a passion of mine. And it's one thing after another where you go, oh my God, if you have the right ingredients, you have no idea how things just fall into place. And it's just like baking a cake. You can't say, I want to bake a cake and I've got anchovies and I've got vanilla essence. If you don't have the right ingredients, you're not going to have the proper cake. When you have the right ingredients, you produce something beautiful. You produce Mm -hmm. something amazing. And that feeling goes viral. That feeling becomes a high. And the way you manifest when your vibration is high, that you just automatically learn these tools. And there's great tools, Hamida. There is beautiful, beautiful tools to actually learning how to raise your vibration, how to keep that frequency running so high, and how to manifest instantaneously that you just shift your entire life. You then start to filter. And when you start to filter, yes, you will see people move away from your life, but you will be so okay with it. Mm -hmm. You will also learn to be comfortable even with the discomfort because you will have learned to detach from those outcomes. You will have learned to stay in your vibration. You will have learned what protects you. It almost brings in a boundary and most of us have trouble with boundaries. Mm -hmm. Most of us don't know how to set boundaries or say no, but keeping your vibration high, it's almost like, oh no, I'm not compromising that. I'm not compromising my vibration. And so automatically you set your boundaries because you also know 
that I'm going to do what I need to do to better my life. And those people that are willing to be with you on your journey automatically will raise their vibration as well. So Salima, you're saying that even that the universe will take care of. You don't have to do something about it. What you have to do on your part is learn how to raise your vibration. What keeps your vibration up? Be aware of what takes your vibration down. That awareness is very important as an individual. But absolutely, yes. Absolutely, the universe takes care of all the rest of it. One of my favorite types of examples to give, and I'd love to share it with your listeners, is when you go to a restaurant, you order your meal. Mm -hmm. After you've ordered your meal, you don't get up and go to the kitchen and ask the chef, do you have the ingredients? Are you sure you know what you're doing? Where did you buy your ingredients from? What if my meal doesn't come? In fact, opposite, you hand the waiter or waitress the menu. And if you take note of the last time you were in a restaurant, you actually sit back and your body actually relaxes Mm -hmm. because now you've placed your order and you've trusted that it's going to come to you. Manifesting is like that. When your vibration is high, you know automatically that the universe will protect you, that it will bring you what you ordered, what you've desired, what you've put out there. The frequency you put out there will bring you everything in that frequency. I'm getting goosebumps here listening to all of this because it is resonating. It is resonating so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. I think that it's a topic that is so fascinating just because when I see how this works and when I've put into practice for myself and for my clients and my patients, how this works, it's dumbfounding. It's dumbfounding how we have so much more power and grip over our lives than we really think. And I just feel if people understand this basic, simple and deep concept, their whole lives can change instantaneously. And there's so much available to us. There is nothing in the world that says you get to be rich you get to be poor, you get to be happy, you get to be sad, you get to manifest, you get stuck. It is open to every single one of us. And if we just grab what is ours, what we are deserving of, what we are entitled to, it's so much easier than waiting around for something to drop in your lap. Mm -hmm. We have much more power than we realize. And we are coming full circle to exactly where you started. It is a gift that you have been given. Do not deny it, accept it, use it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you feel like this is not a generational gift, you have a third eye, each and every one of us. It's part of your chakra system. Your third eye is your intuition. It is your psychic awareness. It is your gut. It can be developed. This gift can be handed to you. All you have to do is be open to receiving it, to enhancing it, to evolving it. And so you can be the one that starts that generational gift of passing that down. I mean, that if people really understood you are powerful as an individual, you'd never second guess. Okay. I'm now thinking about really what the listeners want to know. You did say there were many tools. If you could share one or two tools with us on how to raise our vibration, that would be a great ending to this episode. Okay. I'm happy to share that. And I think one of the most amazing ways I'm going to tell you is meditation. Grounding yourself, quiet time, reconnecting with nature, whether that's barefoot in grass, whether that's being near trees or forested areas, quiet time for yourself whether that's looking at the moon, the sky, just it, whatever reconnects you to nature, whatever grounds you, this automatically raises your vibration. So if you're feeling off, if you're feeling of low vibration, take a few minutes and find your grounding method, whether that's meditation, yoga, exercise, a walk in nature, just looking out at trees, whatever resonates, ground yourself. That's first and foremost. I want to quickly share my practice. I have a little puppy and I take him out every night for his last doing his business kind of a walk. And every time we do that rain, shine, winter, snow, I just look up at the moon. And the minute I look up at the moon, I tell him his name is Mocha. I said, Mocha, thank you for bringing me out to the moon because look how beautiful it is. Sometimes it has a halo around it. And when it has, I can feel the energy in me 
rising. I feel that tingling sensation. So you're right. Just find that one thing that can ground you. And it makes a huge difference. And it sometimes only takes a few minutes. I like the way you look at the moon because the moon is actually one of my strength pieces. I adore the moon and I seek energy from the moon. That is definitely a, a strength source for me. I also live uh, surrounded by a lot of trees. So tree energy is very good. Years and decades ago, they, they had this saying, hug a tree. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what that really meant. And now I understand that just being around tree and if you even think about something in nature, sometimes the weather doesn't permit us to do certain things. But even if you think about trees and you think about how trees are so trusting and how their roots are so strong underneath and think of yourself as a root, think of yourself as that tree and trees, when you see bunches of trees together, you'll see them lean into each other, have a good support system, just like trees have a good support system. That too raises your vibration. Know who you turn to as support. Know what resonates with you as support. Some people will have a Reiki practitioner. Some people will have an altered energy healer. Some people will read a certain self-help book. Some people will turn to a meditation or a practice. These are beautiful tools. Or even as simple as getting together with a few of your friends who you know are at that same level and just sitting with them and having a discussion. People of like minds, it will raise your vibration. People of like minds. And again, your vibe will attract your tribe. So that's what you want to trust. You want to raise that vibe so that you're constantly attracting that higher end tribe. You're constantly expanding on greater experiences. And I've seen how that plays out. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing to feel great. It's almost like a natural high. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Salima. Those were some really good tools. And before we end this, I am going to, and you can deny, we've not planned this. I'm going to put you on the spot and I'm going to put myself on the spot and say, is there anything that you're getting from me right now as a message so that the listeners can experience this? Okay. So just let me tap into your energy. It's amazing because the image I'm getting is an angel with spread wings. And you're being wrapped in a lot of light. One of the messages that I'm getting for you, Hamida, is you have planted your seeds really well. Be patient. When things start to happen, they will happen very quickly. A lot of things will happen at the same time. So be patient, but it's going to unfold beautifully. You have planted those seeds well. Don't force. Trust perfect timing. You are in perfect timing. And so therefore, trust you will align with perfect timing. The universe is protecting you. And your guides are saying to me, they're saying, stay on your path. You're actually on the path you're supposed to be. You're very much in your purpose. Oh, I'm almost tearing up, but thank you so much. Please thank my spirit guides for me. That was a I big will. message. And I so, will. Stay so blessed. Blessed. Thank you. And thank you for being on the show. Time passed. I couldn't stop talking to Salima. And Salima, you were a great guest. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. And it was a pleasure and I'm humbled. Listeners, I am so, so glad that I requested Salima to tap into my energy and she conferred because that message is so important for me. It has answered many questions that I've recently had. Plus, I am extremely happy to have shared it with my listeners. Before I list the key takeaways, I want to inform you that I've had amazing reviews from many listeners regarding episode 91, that I have decided to bring you another episode with Salima, where she will show us how to measure our current vibration and what to do with that information. Stay tuned for part three of this enlightening series with Salima Baluchi. As always, here are my key takeaways. One, most of us have trouble with boundaries. Most of us don't know how to set boundaries or to say no. But if we want to keep our vibration high, we will have to say, oh no, I'm not compromising my vibration, which enables us to automatically set our boundaries. Those people that are willing to be with us on our journey will then raise their vibration to match ours. Two, we must understand that there is nothing in the world that says, you get to be rich, you get to be poor, you get to be happy, you get to be sad, you get to manifest, you get stuck. 
If we just grab what we are deserving of, what we are entitled to, it's so much easier than waiting around for something to drop in our lap. Three, this is not an all-inclusive list, but some tools to elevate our vibration that Salima mentioned are meditation, being in nature, finding something that crowns us, and having a good support system. Four, it's dumbfounding how we have so much more power and grip over our lives than we really think and give credit to ourselves for. If people understand this basic simple and deep concept, their whole lives can change instantaneously. We have much more power than we realize. And finally, our third eye is our intuition. It is our psychic awareness. It is our gut. It can be developed. This gift can be ours. All we have to do is to be open to receiving it, to enhancing it, to evolving it. So we can be the one that starts that generational gift of passing it down. This brings us to the end of this episode. I will bring you the next episode of Sharing Life Lessons next weekend. Until then, be happy, be safe and be blessed.